Hi, this is Bob Roth, Managing Partner and Co-Founder of Cypress Home Care Solutions. Since 1994, we have been providing in-home supportive care services for our older adult population right here in Phoenix, Arizona. Since 2014, we've been bringing you a show on Money Radio called Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. In case you miss our show that airs every Friday at noon, you can catch it right here on our podcast called Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. So when you get a chance, listen in and enjoy the show. The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Money Radio staff, management, or advertisers, and do not represent an offer to buy or sell any securities. Some interviews heard on this program may be sponsored by the participants. It's time for Health Futures with Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. This is Arizona's only show dedicated to providing you with expert advice on how to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. To learn more, call 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Bob Roth. Good afternoon. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock and You. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and it must be Friday, and indeed it is. It's a good Friday, and we're coming at you live from the Scottsdale Air Park Money Radio Studios, 1510 AM, 105.3 FM, and the World Wide Web, moneyradio1510.com. We also podcast now, so you can catch us on all the different podcast applications that are out there. Just look for Health Futures, the podcast. If you are tuning into our show for the very first time, our show is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. It's not by listening to me. It's by listening to these incredible guests I get on the show. So on this Good Friday, wishing everyone listening today a happy Good Friday, the last Friday of March, March 29th, I have the pleasure of having in the studio with me Cole Marvin, Executive Director of Friendship Village Tempe. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Bob. It's nice to be here. I appreciate the invite. It's good to have you back. And, yeah. And, and when I say back, I'm just looking here. I had you twice in 2016 and once in 2017. So it's it's been almost seven years. We, we can't let that happen again. <laughs> Fourth time is a charm. Well, it definitely is. And, you know, certainly a lot has happened since then. Mm. Uh, we had a pandemic. <laughs> um, you guys are growing. Um your daughter is a softball star <laughs> yep. and uh, ranked 22, I think, her, her school in the country, which is really, really exciting. And, you know, I know, you know, here we are at the end of March. Uh, NCAA playoff season is going to be starting really soon. So I'll make sure I look out for her. What's her first name? Kennedy. Kennedy. Kennedy Marvin. Yeah. So w- let's all li- look out for Kennedy Marvin. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, more importantly, a lot of the changes that have happened at Friendship Village. Um, And I remember you were on the show in 2016. You were telling me about this uh, sports bar that you were putting in. And and, and I'd asked you, what's new and different? And and correct me if I'm wrong, one of the things you said back then, and that was seven years ago, you said, you know, more and more of our residents here are baby boomers. Mm -hmm, They're they're, they're not the silent and the GI generation. And you had done a survey internally to see, you know, because you were phasing in new construction. What did the residents want? Yeah, they, uh, a sports bar was definitely a very popular idea. And uh, we had a couple ladies um, have me out to their home up on top of South Mountain. They were moving to the village and uh, they wanted me to see their home. And it was unbelievable views that you, know, you just can't even imagine. And they had created their own sports bar. And they had the shuffleboard table, and they said, Cole, we want to give you this shuffleboard table. You need a sports bar. (laughs) I was like, you're right, we do. And so we started out and designed on a dime, but uh, it's still rocking. Wow. Wow. That that, that is fantastic. You know, I want to do a deeper dive into your community, but I also want to state a a, a very monumental fact, and that is you are now in your 44th year. Yes. That is in and of itself is phenomenal. I mean, when you sit down and you think about that, that means my math tells me 1980. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 19, exactly. 1980 is when Friendship Village Tempe, 
And there are other friendship villages where you're the was yours the first? No, I don't think so. No, Pro first in Arizona for sure. But first in uh, Arizona, it was a popular name used back in the late seventies. Wow. Something really cool, Bob, just to share is uh, when you're around for 44 years, we now have more than 40 second generation residents living at Friendship Village. Their moms and dads live there. 40. For more Four than 40. Oh, wow. You and took care of their moms and dads, and now the children, yes. adult children are there. Yep. And we just two firsts that I'm excited to share with you. One is we had a husband, wife, and a mother-in-law move into a, a large floor plan. So we've never had that before, and it's really cool. They're a ton of fun, and they're, they're doing great. Uh, and then we had our first employee move into Friendship Village as well. She was a licensed nurse in our assisted nice. living building. And it's fun seeing her every morning. It's like, hey, what are you doing, <laughs> Elvia? So. Is, is she sometimes forget and thinks she's going to work, right? <laughs> yeah. she, uh, she was over there yesterday. Well, helping, <laughs> helping out the residents because every, everybody can't. needs a nurse. I mean, seriously. Well, nurses can't turn it off. No, they can't. <laughs> they, they definitely can't. So 44 years you guys have been doing it, and you, were, you just celebrated an anniversary. It was up on LinkedIn. Yeah, 17 years. And, and I remember you pre your predecessor was there for a long time. 20 plus. 20 plus years. And, and, and I, his name escapes me, mm -hmm. my, me right, right away. What's his name? Daryl Jensen. Daryl Jensen. And he's on our board. Wow. So I remember Daryl. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, great guy, great mentor. Yes. And, and on the board. Yeah, he, he's a high contributor. So lots changed. Yeah. Six, six, seven years ago, you were building a sports bar, but you've done <laughs> you've done a lot of construction. Uh, you've had to go raise some money and and mm -hmm. uh, get permits from the city to do some construction. I, I we're on a radio show, so mm. obviously we don't have pictures and video. Yeah. But can you tell us a little bit about what you've done? Absolutely. I would encourage everybody to go to our website, which is uh, www.friendshipvillagetempe.com. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we built a. We did not have to do any demolition to build our first building, which was important. Uh, we built 40 apartments, and we put three pickleball courts on the rooftop. And uh, pickleball courts. Yeah. Wow. And uh, talk about a visionary. I mean. Did you know pickleball was going to be as big as it is today? I did, and I will tell you, I, uh, I had to work through some adversity. Uh, my, my company was not super excited about it. They were like, that's that's wild, dude. We, we don't put pickleball on rooftop. Right. I was like, yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. And you did. Yep. And, and I would imagine you, you're taking reservations because those things are probably really hot. We have something happening. right? We have a national champion that lives at the village. He hosts outside people, and he brings in about 16 every Wednesday. He has now referred six of his players that don't live at the village as sales candidates, prospects. Wow. I know. Wow. It's, uh, it's amazing. That's a good thing you put those pickleball courts in. Well, and then we brought phase two on, and that was 64 apartments. And you could literally walk right from the court, uh, pickleball courts over to the rooftop of phase two or Acacia, where we have our Starfire rooftop restaurant uh, and our brewery. So those guys come over. They pull out seats right now. They'll sit out on the patio, order a burger, get a beer, and just sit around and, and have fun. Did I hear you right? Brewery. Yes. you got a brewery and, and a senior living community? We do. I, these boomers are taking over. Well, it, uh, <laughs> it has been well received. It's funny when I do presentations to prospects and I say the brewery and they're like, what? Brewery? Get their attention. <laughs> and, and I think if, you know, you and I were talking before and talked before today, too. I, I, you're like custom brewing stuff. You, you're not like, it's not just Budweiser and Miller. No, no. We, uh, we hired an incredible brewmaster. This man is... Uh, a mad scientist and a genius. Whoa. And he's already produced four beers that are honestly out of this world. They truly are. And has he named them? He uh, he has. We got Hammer and Hanks Heffelweizen. <laughs> Hammer and Hanks. I yep. love that. Yeah. I it's, love that. Uh, we've got uh, kind of a throwback to the original recipe for a fat tire. That has been very well received. Nice. And so uh, he, and he's having fun, man. Well, and, and and the the idea, and I'm vision, I'm envisioning, going to play pickleball, and walking over there, like you said, grabbing a burger and a beer, and sitting up on the rooftop and watching the sunset. Totally. And the views from your your rooftop are oh, amazing. They are. I, it made me cry when I first saw it. Wow. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we got three more segments, Cole. I don't know if you remember that. It goes really, really fast. 
You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock and You. I'm your host, Bob Roth. I've got Cole Marvin, the executive director from Friendship Village in Tempe. Stick around. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures taking t- stock in you. If you are just Tuning in, we're in our second segment here. I got Cole Marvin here in the studio with me. He's the executive director for Friendship Village Tempe. And if you missed our first segment, go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button right below its radio show. You'll catch this one and many, many more. So, Cole, we were talking about what you guys are doing over there. All right. So for those that didn't hear the first segment, pickleball, microbrewery, um, restaurant, executive chef that's like you know the bomb he's amazing he, really he had is. some great training um views like no none other uh, have i missed anything no but i will share something that i never thought about but i've had three residents come up to me like cole i feel like i went out to lunch today it, you had it on on you know and, in and your they never left property, the campus but i feel like i went out to lunch today i was like that is awesome nice. that's a great compliment oh it is it is i mean for our older adults, I mean, they need to get out. Totally. And and what you've provided is a social engagement atmosphere, and mm-hmm. that's what we're needing. I mean, one third of our population, sixty five and older, lives home alone. Yeah. And I don't know what your your profile is. How many residents do you have? Just ballpark. Yeah, yeah like uh, eight nine hundred. Eight nine. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Wow. Eight nine hundred, and, and percentage wise, what would you say? Do, do, it, does my statistic represent it? Is it about one third or in those apartments alone or residences yeah. alone? Yeah, I would say uh, a little more than a third. Yeah. So, I mean, you, as, as the residents, as the community, you have to make sure you're engaging these people and, and bringing them out. 100 percent, man. That's yeah. when they thrive. Right. Absolutely. I, and I would imagine, and, and you and I haven't had this conversation, I would imagine your team does everything they can. You know, it, my fictitious client is Mrs. Abramson. So Mrs. Abramson mm-hmm. actually lives in your place. So how do we get Mrs. Abramson out? Do you have a do you have a recipe for that? Do you have a standard protocol that you guys follow? You know, I mean, we, we the, the one thing about the village is the culture. And when you move in, it's kind of, almost kind of weird for some people. But the welcome wagon comes out in force. Wow. They're coming with cookies. They're inviting you to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Come to the this play you know it's they really mm. uh, get their hooks in you and, and most people engage i um, love that so it's just organic it's real that is real yeah and that feels it doesn't feel fake it feels no. a, it feels real i can't imagine that so i'm up at your website you know just so you know, i want to give it a plug right now frenchvillageaz.com and i i gotta tell you i mean amazing i mean really it's easy uh you, you've got a video to watch yeah, we just came out with a new commercial. And you got you got the dining, and you have all levels of care. Yes. You have, you have independent, assisted, memory, skilled. Home health. And rehab, too. Yep. Nice. Nice. Yeah, there shouldn't be shouldn't be too many reasons that we, where we see something that we're not sure what to do. Right. And and for our listeners, I mean, exactly where, you, where are you located? What are the big cr- cross we're just, streets? We're on uh, Southern Avenue between Dobson and Price, so right there by the 101. It's actually a pretty incredible location. And real close to a hospital, too. <laughs> the, the, the canal separates Mesa and us and, and Banner Desert. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, I mean, that's important, it especially is. for people who are listening. I mean, you know, as we get older, we, we need those types of resources and, and to know that you could get there in just a heartbeat. And well, and for your friends to be able to come visit. Right. Real easy. That's an important part of getting better. Wow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. So um, we talked about some of the changes that yeah. have happened. What's going on? Is there any future stuff that's happening? There is. Uh, so we finished phase one and two. Both are fully sold out. Uh, so now we're taking a look at phase three. And uh, it's going to end up being 69 apartments. We'll have two penthouses, about 2,000 square feet on the rooftop. Whoa. <coughs> the sports bar we talked about gets demolished, but it comes back to life on the rooftop. And I don't know if you – have you ever seen duck pin bowling? 
I grew up in Baltimore. Okay. So I know all about duck pin bowling. We're going to have two lanes of duck pin bowling up there. Whoa. How much fun is that? It's got to be a ton of fun. Well, I, so when is that going to be completed? It's hard to say because right now what we're doing is we have people living in the area that needs to be demoed. Right. And so we're slowly moving them out at the rate of attrition when other apartments like theirs open up. So I, my best guess is we might have phase three cleared out, say, June of 25. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start talking to my wife, <laughs> and, and uh, that two, you know, two thousand square foot penthouse that yeah. might be about what I need. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. microbrew, pickleball, what else do you need? Nothing. And and will you be able to cross over Absolutely. to like you are for the phase one and phase two? All rooftops will connect. All rooftops will connect. Mm -hmm. That's so important. You don't have to go all the way down. No, it feels so go, cool, too. Oh, it does. When you're just walking around up there, it's like, this is awesome. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you don't have to jump over the building. No. It just, there's a cross crossing. That's really, really cool. You know, amazing stuff that you guys are doing for a 44-year-old business, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and thriving. Thriving. And, and, and I know that you guys are usually always full. I mean, high demand. Yeah. Got an interesting one for you as well. I just thought of um, back in the late 70s, Life Care Services developed uh, Friendship Village, found the, the land and, uh, and, and developed it with the board of directors. The original guy that was the developer on behalf of Life Care Services just moved in with his wife. Whoa. He literally built the village. That's really incredible. It is, and they're wonderful people, just and, lovely people. And by the way, I mean, we're sitting here talking about the, the structures, the phases. Mm -hmm. You have, like, casitas and stuff on the property, mm -hmm. too. I mean, you know, this, this thing sits on 55 acres. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that, too? Because yeah. you serve, you know, these, these casitas, these smaller homes. Yeah, we have 296 um, uh, cottages, casitas. Um, we, we call them cottages more often than not because then we did go and build 14 what we do call casitas, which are much larger, open floor plan, vaulted roof, natural light. Um, we have not had one of those turn over since we built them. Whoa. <coughs> they, they have not turned over. No. That, that says a lot. Yeah, they're living well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that says a lot. <laughs> No, and listen, that it's incredible what you guys have done and how you've kept up with the times. I mean, there's nothing worse than going into a place that seems tired. Yeah. And, you know, I remember when I first met you and Daryl, which was a long time ago, uh, the place looks a lot different today than yes. it did then. It's, it is amazing, and it'll look a lot different when you get Phase 3 done, too. Yeah. That's exciting. No, that is exciting. So in the, in the world of, obviously, senior living, you know, Changes are happening every day, and, and you know I want to talk to you just a little bit about Dolly back, and really, you know, you haven't been here in six or seven years. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you guys do during the pandemic? And, it's a good and talk question. To, talk to us through that. <laughs> it was, I mean, so I survived the financial meltdown, which was the darkest days for senior living. Um, thought, wow, nothing like that will ever happen again, and right. I can say without a doubt, COVID was far darker. Um, you had a lot of well-meaning adult children, uh, helicopter children, <laughs> helping me uh, make decisions. Um, you had fear, which was really, really bad. Mm. Uh, and then you mix in some, this isn't even real. Uh, that was fun. Um, struggling with some of that. And oh, yeah. It divided the community t to some degree. It scared me. It, I'm happy to report we came back together and we are we are great but that was my biggest fear of covid was if if it disrupts our culture yeah you know it, it brought out some of the worst in humanity and it also brought out some of the good too yeah. i mean you you think about it i've had doctors that are sitting right where you're at where you know the the, the adoption of telehealth telemedicine was right around the 20% mark in the physician world and now it's over 70% because they were forced to use it. Totally. And and CMS, thank God, said, all right, we're going to pay 100% reimbursement because they were only paying a fraction of that before. Well, we had just opened in January of 2020 a nurse practitioner clinic, and we had no idea how amazing that was going to serve us. Wow. To have Talk a, about timing. Like, yeah. Yeah. We got lucky, lucky, lucky. And it was a big deal. It helped. It made yeah. things a lot easier. So uh, can you share how did you guys fare? Did you lose a lot of people? Yeah, we lost seven. 
Nice. Which I think relative to the, the big but picture. 900? <laughs> and they, I mean, they were compromised, yeah. you know. Sure. It, it, it was it's sad, of course, but the, of course. The, they were not well. Mm. So. No, but I mean, I mean, all of us were, you know, following these protocols, right? Yeah. I mean, trying to find PPE was not the easiest thing in the world. Oh. And, and, and you know, in some of the parts of your community, people aren't used to donning and doffing, you know. Oh, Lord. You, <laughs> the masks. You, you, yeah, the masks. Oh, man. Exactly. <laughs> so there was a lot of learning that we all went under. Yeah. It, uh, it tested your metal. Well, it tested your metal, but, I mean, I think, you know, in our lifetime, that may not be the last one. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, for us, now we're better prepared. We're smarter. I hope so. I hope so, too. I really, really do. Man. Well, enough about that. <laughs> I mean, right. you know, obviously, you know, you're you're embracing a lot of the innovation that is happening. You're really keeping up with the times. And, you know, I want to spend, you know, a lot more time in the second half talking about where you see things going mm -hmm. in the aging community. But to really tee it up, you know, we've got about a minute here. Do you want to just like, you know, tickle the uh, the audience in terms of some of the things that we we can talk about? Yeah. I mean, I think our focus is really and truly we're purveyors of fun. Where honestly, that's what we do. Purveyors I, of fun. <laughs> I um, look at some of the mailers that other communities send out, and it's like, we'll take care of you. People don't want taken care of. Right. I want to have fun. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of, it, it works, and uh, that's always been our focus. Um, and so it, it, it's just neat to see it actually working. Well, you know what? I, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but I would love to hear in the second half. Where do you see some of that purveying of fun? going in 2025 and beyond yeah it's hard to believe that we're going to say 2025 I know, right i know you yeah. know it's uh I, I, dining is it, we were talking earlier dining is so important and uh you know running a tight menu and executing at a very high level right is it's a big deal and that's an area that i think we really want to focus on well Let's talk more about it when we get back in the second half. You're listening to Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. I've got Cole Marvin. He is the executive director of this incredible community called Friendship Village Tempe. You can find him at friendshipvillageaz.com. Stick around. We'll be right back. I hope you're enjoying the show. This is your host, Bob Roth, managing partner and co-founder of Cypress Home Care Solutions. If you have any questions about the topics that are discussed during the show, visit us online at cypresshomecare.com or give us a call at 602-264-8009. We are entering now the second half of our show, so stay tuned for more helpful information to assist you with your aging loved ones. Tempe here. I uh, was giving out his website before. I'm going to give it out again because I'm really impressed with what Cole's done and what Friendship Village is doing. And that would be friendshipvillageaz.com. So, Cole, wow. You know, we talked about a lot. You know, <laughs> 44 years. You've been at the helm for 17 years. Um, a lot has changed in a very positive way. Um, you know, I, I would love to talk about, you know, maybe some of the other technology mm -hmm. and technological changes that you see. Um, that are happening. I know that I think you mentioned that you have, you know, some kind of app. Um, yeah. Touch tour or something. Touchdown. Like Touchdown. Yeah. So, I mean, it has all the things. I mean, you can go in there and look at any menu, any calendar, sign up for things, open table reservations, all the employees, all the residents. Um, you can send them emails and mm -hmm. yep. messages. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. Comment cards, um, those types of things. And, uh, I think more importantly, the thing that, that we did was <laughs> fired me from making technology decisions because I had no no uh, business making them and hiring a true chief information officer. Whoa. And, uh, yeah, that was a big decision. And um, he helps technology work for people versus frustrating. You know, you stick these bells and whistles that sound exciting and they don't work for them and they get frustrated and they disengage so him and his team has really been able to go a long way to uh get them get, get, get help our residents comfortable with using technology well and let's face it i mean you said this six seven years ago you're getting more and more baby boomers and you know look i i fall into that category i mean i'm pretty adept to how to how to use my mm -hmm. devices so i would imagine you know for a lot of the new movement guys and gals, so I mean, it's pretty easy for them to use their devices. For sure. 
and we're running fiber, single mode fiber throughout the whole campus so that people can stream at a high rates of speed. Nice. Um, don't want to frustrate them with buffering. Right. So, right. No, that, that's a big deal. It really it is, is a big deal. And I would imagine, uh, I don't know if you have cable or Cox or, or DirecTV. <sighs> or we have Cox, and uh, that is probably one of our biggest challenges. Mm. Um, My challenge, too. Yeah, they're, uh, they are a very uh, tricky company to work with. Yeah. It's just so big, so big. They are so big. They are so big. Are you looking at alternatives? I mean, people can stream in on, yeah. on their devices if they want to. Yeah, we are. We have kind of a five-year plan. Okay. So. No, very good. Yeah. Very good. Anything else technological that you guys are working on? Do you have any robots in there? No, we don't. I've seen <laughs> them. Uh, have we, we have not uh, leaned into that one yet. Um, but we are doing some uh, fall prevention, fall tracking um, hardware, software that it, it, it we're hoping will help us reduce falls because um, obviously that's a big deal. Well, and, and uh, just for our listeners to know, that is – primarily the number one reason why older adults end up in the ERs because they've fallen and and they more invariably could have been prevented yep. and prevent fall prevention is something that we really need to take serious it is it is all it takes is one and it, you know the other thing people don't think about is it's not just the injury that's sustained from the fall it's the trauma and then the fear of falling that then leads you to stop doing things because you're afraid you're going to fall right. so you disengage entirely that's really bad. Yeah. And, but, you know, knowing that you have rehab at your place, knowing that I, I believe, if I remember correctly, you have a wellness center at your place, mm -hmm. you have all the tools to be able to help these mm -hmm. residents, you know, if they do fall or if they're fearing fall, to build up strength and be able to, re, you know, get back to some type of normalcy. Right. right. We, uh, we'll call them and not ask them if they want to do it. We, we tell them that here, here's the time that we need you to come over here. Right. And uh, once and they see that they're getting better, all of a sudden now they're in. Right. They're like, I'm getting better. I'm not getting worse. So it's a thing. No, it, it definitely is a thing. So we, we talked about technology. Uh, you know, I, I wrote a column just this month, uh, the month of April, that will be put out on the Jewish News and Love and Life. And that is on scams. Mm. Um, scams are, are unbelievable what's happening to older adults. And, you know, we and I shared with you during the break that we ended up helping a resident of another community avert losing $10,000. And, you know, what are you doing and what do we do as a society to really right. help educate people that, you know, the person on the other phone or the one that's sending the email or the one that's sending you messages on your social media feed aren't they don't really love you mm -hmm. they're, they're they really don't need you to do what you're being asked to do you know we we do a lot of education and one of the things that is super important is people get embarrassed if they get scammed they get embarrassed and then they want to cover it up we've tried to create a culture of it, it, don't be embarrassed let's talk about it and how can we help someone else not fall prey to the same thing that you did right so i think that's helpful no it, it definitely is i mean it's it's educating people and and you know you and i also talked at the break these deep fakes mm. and you know the deep fakes they're real oh yeah i mean i just saw a video and i shared with you about tiger woods you know giving away ten thousand you know tailor-made drivers and it was tiger woods that was talking to me but it really wasn't tiger woods no and you know for our older adults, you know, they can do that to your children or your grandchildren. And they can do it video-wise. They could also do it auditory-wise in, in, a, in a phone. Sure. Absolutely. So It's scary. No, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. So, you know, I would imagine you guys are doing lots to educate. We, yeah, we do. We put it in our villager. Anytime we find out about a scam, um, whether somebody got duped or not, we uh, put it in the villager. It's kind of like a little scam corner. And then I talk about them at the village meeting, which is kind of our state of the state. We just, you know, hey, this is a scam that's going around, folks. Right. Don't fall for it. Don't and fall for it, for sure. So one of the topics I do want to talk to you about is one that challenges both me and you and so many that are out there. <laughs> and that is the challenge that we have with workforce. Yeah. And, you know, for me, it's direct care workers, caregivers. For you, it's direct care workers and caregivers but it's also food services. Cooks. It's also housekeeping. It's also your engineers. It's also your technology people. It's your wellness people. It's all of the above. 
Yeah. Tell me, tell me what the environment is like today, and what do you see this thing going? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing good. Uh, we're chipping away. Sometimes it's three steps forward and one back. Um, so look to close the back door. You know, bringing them in, close right. that back door. Um, but we are struggling with uh, cooks, food production, um, and licensed nurses. And then our housekeeping department, it used to be the most rock solid, incredible department. And mm. now we just cannot retain folks. They're just not, it's, didn't sign up for that, <laughs> you know? Right. And it's hard. It is hard. I mean, so are you doing anything unique and different? I mean, yeah. how, you know, for, for me, I know we're trying to do different things to onboard people and, yeah. You know, trying to build culture. You know, yeah. you already have a culture. How do you indoctrinate them into that? So we do a couple things. One is we, uh, we kind of have a Bible at the village, and it's called First Break All the Rules. And First Break All the Rules really boils down the essence of engaging employees. And there's 12 questions. It's the Q12. And really, if you just do the first three or four, you're winning. Uh, you're, you start hitting on 12. I mean, that's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But uh, engagement is, is a game changer. Mm. It really is. And it's not, it's, there's a recipe. Right. And we follow it. Right. And, and that's so important is engagement and, and meeting them where they're at. 100%. I, I mean, one of the things that we learned, I mean, I, t I told you we had the big office at Camelback and Central and caregivers used to come to us. We go to them now. Yeah. And, and we, we, we do what we can to smooth out that process, take away all the friction to get them into the funnel and get them out and get them working. Yep. No doubt. That, that is really <coughs> key. We use a, system called we care connect as well and it starts touching them early in the relationship asking them questions and then they go to the, the administration team and then is then quarterbacked out to the appropriate directors and so you can kind of get out in front of things before it gets festered up you know you might be able to get in front of it so for our listeners anybody out there that is a caring spirit somebody that you know is doing housekeeping or food service or knows somebody how do they get a hold of you beside the website? Is there a phone number too? There is, um, you know, 480-831-5000. Uh, um, but the, uh, without a doubt, the website and the career tab is I, the I, way to go. I just cl clicked on the career tab. Pretty easy. Yeah. Work making a difference, go home smiling. Right. I like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you got a lot of smiling people there. And got one right here in the studio. Cole Marvin, executive director <laughs> from Friendship Village Tempe, we're down three, Cole. We got one more to go. Got a little taking us out. Yes, we do. Stick around. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now. Here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock and You. I'm your host, Bob Roth. If you're just tuning in, we're in our fourth segment here, and I've got Cole Marvin, Executive Director from Friendship Village Tempe here in the studio. If you want to go find out more about them, go to friendshipvillageaz.com. We've covered a lot of stuff, so if you want to catch those first three episodes and you miss this one, or you're just tuning in this one, you want to go to our website at cypresshomecare.com, click on the media button right below its radio show, you'll catch this one and many, many more. So, uh, you know, you have this great community and you, you have this purveyor of fun. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly, you know, I ended this third segment by talking about how do you recruit people and then the, under the career tab, it says work, make a difference, go home smiling. And, and I really believe that, I've been there I was there for your 39th anniversary. I've been to your community. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone seems to be really, really happy. Yeah, once the residents get their hooks in, yeah, you're, you're done. We have people who literally call themselves lifers or village people. The village people. Yeah, and it's really cool. When somebody's like, hey, I'm a lifer, it's like, oh, man, that is, thank you. That mm. makes me so excited. But you know what's really exciting is the fact that the guy who designed the life care service, worked for life care services, designed Friendship Village, Arizona, is now a resident 
It's unbelievable. That 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 just blows me away. We joke around. All all roads lead to the village. <laughs> <laughs> that, I love that. I absolutely love that. But speaking of community, you do uh, a lot of work to help some of the causes here, and and Alzheimer's yeah. Association's one, and Parkinson's and others. I I know that you know because you guys are so cohesive. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's uh, obviously affects a lot of folks, Alzheimer's, and uh, our team super passionate about it we do a handful of uh fundraisers i uh, smoke a bunch of briskets pork butts and uh turkey breasts wow and people pay i don't know 30 40 dollars to come to the barbecue i would yeah you have to let me know <laughs> i will <laughs> <coughs> so we raise funds that way um we do some other different things and <coughs> i was saying that uh they said they wanted to raise like $25,000 and i was just like you guys are out of your minds it's not going to happen and they exceeded it it was unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Yeah. We also do, uh, f- for our first responders, Mesa and Tempe, we do a barbecue. We have a real nice smoker there, and I love smoking it. So we will have all the police, fire, and ambulance folks over uh, to the village, and we, we do a big barbecue, and they show up and have fun. And we're, we're, we're a power user. I mean, we, oh. I, we use their resources more than I care to say. I believe it. And it's nice to pay back and do it this way. And they do appreciate it. And and, and they can stay a little while and, and have, you know, a, a very uh, thoughtful and, and comfortable conversation with all the residents. Totally. Yeah, we do. We have our residents come out and they, they make sure they understand how much they are appreciated. No, I love that. Absolutely yeah. love that. So as we wind down this last segment, you know, I, I want to really talk about the future. And, you know, you and I talked a little bit about it offline you know, the demographics are startling. It's scary. I mean, the 85-year-old population is going to nearly quadruple between now and 2050, and the 65-year-old population is going to more than triple. You know, thoughts on it? You know, I'd love to hear, you know, mm-hmm. Col- Cole Marvin, pearls of wisdom. <laughs> uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, how, how do we handle this beast? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I mean, there's different models out there. You have your assisted living where people wait at home until, you know, the wheels start wobbling. And now I'm look it's a more of a needs-based decision. I'm looking at assisted living. And they're building those uh, uh, pretty aggressively. Our product's a little different. You know, I, I tell people when they come to the presentations, it's, if you need us, we don't want you. And then they're like, what? It's like, no, seriously. This is not a needs-based decision, friends. This is a lifestyle decision. Mm-hmm. You don't wait until you need us. And it's sad when people do. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, gosh, we have 71 people with $10,000 down on our ready list, hoping we give them a call Wow! for existing inventory. Wow. Yeah. And, and what would you say the average age of some of those folks are? Well, so I will tell Probably you, close to my age. Uh, well, uh, not, not quite that young, but... Uh, oh, you're kind. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the first building we built of those, uh, we did the average age, it was 77. And then phase two is 76. Whoa. Yeah. They're, they're starting earlier. Yes. And you know what's interesting is, to your point, I mean, they the the, the demographic that you are targeting is, is one that is doing this for lifestyle. Mm-hmm. They're doing this because they want to be able to be active adults, not infirmed and, and using walkers and, and, and using the other services that, you know, we all we all don't want and don't ever dream of ever using or be a burden on their children. Exactly. You know, a lot of the kids say this is the best gift my parents ever gave me. And wow. I believe it. Yeah. No, I do believe it too. You know, I, I one quick question to you as we close too is, uh, you know, I always think about advanced directives. You know, do you guys do a big push for that to get people to put them into place because. Yeah. You know, it, it, it saves, you know, you talk about a gift giving to your family. Mm-hmm. You're giving a gift to your family by having your advanced directives. Yeah, we, uh, we work, we have, an, we have an independent living social worker, and she's incredible. And uh, that's something that she works hard on uh, when people come in and don't have it. She interviews them to make sure that they're appropriate for independent living. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's one of the questions. And if they don't, it's like, hey, let's sit down and let's get this done. But more often than not, our people are super bright. They're planners. They're not flying by the seat of their pants. So more often than not, they do have a plan. Nice. So, nice. so Cole, is there a question I haven't asked? Or, <laughs> or is there you know, s- some final remarks you would like to leave our listeners uh, relative to not only Friendship Village, 
Tempe, but you know, to aging and senior living or lifestyle living, Ooh. you know, w what would you say or leave with us? It's a it's a fulfilling career. Uh, people uh, really should think about uh, getting into senior living. Um, you, I leave the village on a regular basis, feeling my cup floweth over. Mm. Um, I feel appreciated, loved, and that's important. There's no paycheck that can uh, can check that box. And we're making a positive difference in some of the most incredible people's lives. So how many people can say that? No, they can't. And, and, and I hear that message from two perspectives. I hear that message from, one, a potential future resident, but I also hear that more from a potential employee and, and doing this kind of work because it is fulfilling. And mm -hmm. I will tell you, Cole, I, feel, I get the same feeling. I mean, look, I, I'm a little bit older than you, and I've got a lot of friends of mine that are retiring. And they're asking me, hey, mm -hmm. you know, when are you going to retire and, and play golf with me and, and take vacations? And I don't really have that desire. I mean, I love what I do. I That's mean, awesome. what do they say? You know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And, and the fact that we are able, we can make a difference in people's lives. And, and really, you know, we're kind of like part of their final chapter in their book. 100%. Well, and there's so much to learn from them. Oh, no kidding. I mean, what they've seen and done over their 80, 90 years. It's, there's so much just if you just listen. Right, and, and that's the key, is listen and respect and, 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 and just treat them the way you would like to be treated. For sure. Well, what do you got planned for the weekend, my friend? We've got Easter coming yeah. up, so I know, I know you, uh, you probably have, uh, you're probably smoking something, We're maybe a ham. Fry a turkey. <laughs> you're gonna fry and, a turkey, uh, there you go. Stop at Honey Baked on the way home tonight, and uh, we have a ham ordered, so uh, nice. it's hard to beat Honey Baked. They have that figured out. They, <laughs> and, and it makes it a little bit easier on you in the kitchen. That's oh, for yeah. Sure. No doubt. <laughs> so, and lots of yard work. The uh, rain has brought uh, weeds. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. You know, I, I went to an event for Banner, their foundation, and it was over there at Mountain Shadow Resort, which is mm. absolutely stunning. But, you know, the back of it, you know, the backdrop is Camelback Mountain. And I've lived here for 30 years. I don't think I've seen so much green up there. Right on. I mean, the, all this rain we've gotten, we've got a lot of green. So, you know, in April, we're going to see a lot of flowering. But come July and August, we're going to probably be in tinderboxes. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of the recipe that you get around yeah. here. Yes. Well, Cole Marvin, we can't let it go six or seven no. years anymore. Too much fun. We are having too much fun. And, and we're, we're going to try and do some work together. And I'm looking forward to getting together that's with fun. you guys in a couple weeks. Yep. So great to have you here at Health Futures. Thank you. Make it a great day. Have a good Friday. I and, will. And happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you. You too. We'll be back next Friday. place like home you've been listening to bob roth health futures if you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care call cypress home care solutions at 602-264-8009 that's 602-264-8009 or visit cypresshomecare.com be sure to join health futures with bob roth every friday at noon right here on Money Radio 1510 and 105.3 FM.